Hello and welcome back to Subnautica. It has been a few days since I've uploaded because I got sick at the end of last week, so if I sound a little bit funny uh, and there was a big gap in the uploads, that is why. Today we're going to be heading over to the Sunbeam Landing site to check out that area. But we have 40 minutes before it arrives, so it's not a big deal. Uh, I also have another radio message that we should check out really quick. Welcome aboard, Captain. This is Life Pod 4. We've landed close to the Aurora. Flotation device is active, but we've got some big old fish in the water with us, and I don't know how long we're going to last. We're close to the crash site, so bring radiation protection. Four out. Okay, so we found another Life Pod signal, I guess you would call it. Signal coordinates corrupted. Approximate transmission origin recorded to data bank. Okay. Uh, before we head out, there is one thing I want to make now that I don't need the, uh, what's it called? The radiation suit, and that would be the rebreather. What this does, basically, and I don't know if I've explained this mechanic yet, but as you get deeper in Subnautica, and I mean, like, literal altitude depth, I don't mean, like, deeper into the story, you start to use more oxygen per second. The rebreather removes that and makes it so that it's always one second for one oxygen basically. So for that we need fiber mesh and wiring kit. And I can't see it because of the sun beam thing, that's fine. There's two silver. Let's go get a couple of pieces of creep vine. Make a rebreather. Now what do you actually need for a reinforced dive suit? Because that is also an upgrade that would be nice. We need synthetic fibers which are ingredients unknown okay so we don't really have to worry about that just yet because we haven't found anything to use it for uh, but we're not too far off of what you need to be able to make those i'm gonna make a few beacons here as well because beacons are useful for navigation it's always nice to just be able to go where's this biome and then check your beacon list so let's make a few of those right let's make our way over to the island we need to reach for the sunbeam. There's no rush, but I want to see if there's anything interesting over here. Ah, just over here, we're crossing into the underwater islands. This place does have a wreck that would probably be quite useful for me. Also, did I not equip the rebreather? That's annoying. Give me a second. I don't want to clog my inventory with a radiation helmet, so let's just throw that in there. Hello, bone sharks. Now, I can't get all the way down to the bottom of this biome because I think it's like 500 meters and I can only go 300, but I don't think we have to go all the way down. Is that it there? Yes, it is. Hello, reefbacks. Great, we got some stuff here. Let's have a look around. Gotta watch out for bone sharks, but they're not the scariest thing ever. Ooh, Cyclops engine fragment, nice. Two thirds of the way on that, and a nutrient block. Erosion patterns on the land masses suspended here suggest they once floated on the surface. Okay. Cyclops engine fragment. So we can make that part of the Cyclops now, but you kind of need to be able to make all three of the parts to actually make one. <laughs> so we're a third of the way there on the Cyclops. This is another engine fragment. Some gold, I'll take that. Is there anything in these caves? Oh, this is spooky. There's a bone shark in here. Oh, there's those little crawler guys. Oh, rubies, hello. I always pick up rubies. You need them for power cell chargers later on. Hello. Goodbye. Let's grab a little bit of oxygen. I definitely need a tank upgrade. That's what I'm seeing here. Should be okay, though. Oh, a prawn suit arm. Drill, that's the one you need. I let you mine the big nodes you might see. You can find two of those, okay. Some loot over here. Another nutrient block, okay. Yeah, here's one of these big nodes I was talking about. You need the prawn suit for that. Another nutrient block. Stasis Rifle Fragment, I have that though. Another ruby. Oh, two. Hey. Okay. Oh, there's loads in here. Okay. Let's not fill up my inventory yet. Can you scan these floaters or do they not count? Ancient floaters. They're held up by living beings. That's why they're floating. Right, let's head inside the wreckage. Hello, Bone Shark. 
Um, got one of these doors. Another bronze suit arm here, the grappling arm. Another very important one. IMO. Uh, I think this just leads outside, right? Oh, no, it doesn't. I mean, technically it does. Not what I meant, though. Alright, I will go grab some oxygen and I'll laser cut that door behind me. I think it's night time. Laser cutter time. Hello. Propulsion arm fragment. And just an arm. Bronze suit fragment here, but I already have that from the Aurora. Take that. Another grappling arm fragment. That'd be very helpful. What's this? Cyclops fire suppression system. Installs a fire suppression system on the Cyclops. That would be maybe useful. Power cell charger fragment. Have I got this yet? No, okay. Keep an eye out for the other one of those then. And grab this. PRAWN safety instructions appendix A14. Don't climb on or get off equipment while it's moving. I mean, yeah, that's a good idea. 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in a second. Swim charge fins. Wirelessly charge your held tool while you swim. Okay. I'm more of an ultra glide fan because they let you move faster, but I don't have those. So that could certainly be worth making. Another power cell charger fragment. Now you know you can come here if you need that. This door lead nowhere. Yep, that leads nowhere. Just pull that shut. No thank you. I don't know if there's anything else in here. I don't think so. We got a few good blueprints from that though. We got the start on the drill arm, got the grappling arm, start on the propulsion arm, power cell charger, cyclops engine, cyclops fire suppressant, uh, what was that other thing? The charging fins or whatever they're called. This thing's damaged. Quite heavily, I might add. Alright, let's head over to the island then. We do have to be careful near the island because it does have Reaper Leviathans around it. Or at least a Reaper Leviathan. Uh, but you can usually hear those before they become a major problem and go around them. This is a good place to get rubies though. It's like basically completely safe if you just go into one of the caves. I'd probably still take the bulb zone though. Closer. Oh, we got another radio message but I am miles away. Oh. Here's the island. It's, it's more of a mountain sticking out the top of the place, but whatever. Oh, we have our first warper. Detecting massive energy signature in the region. Cannot identify it. I forget precisely everything the warpers can do, but I know for sure they can teleport you outside your sea mall. And they're also pretty good at killing you. So, if I can avoid them. I would like to do that. Are you damaging my Seamoth, you little fucker? Come here. Come here. Yeah, fuck that guy. I just had a reaper. Probably on the other side of the island, realistically, but I'm going to keep my wits about him. Yeah, I hear him. Let's see if we can see him. Hmm. Alright, we just have to be careful when we leave here, I guess. I want to get reapered. Here we are. And there's a big thing. Let's go touch it. Where precisely is the sunbeam landing? Oh, right there, okay. <laughs> I wonder if this is in some way going to affect that. Gee, it'd be a really short game if they rescued me now. Ooh, we want some of these. Elbow seeds. I don't know if I'll be able to get them back in time because I have to sit here for 20 minutes, but you know. If I can farm those, they're very effective. Hello. Purple tablet. Yeah, you get a real good look at that, buddy. <laughs> These islands always reminded me of the first Halo game. Right, well, before we head into that alien facility, 
I want to go in this way and see what we can find. I mean, technically, I'm the alien, right? But still. There's shale in here. Very safe way of getting that, then. There's a purple tablet up there. Oh, lithium as well. Purple tablet. I'm guessing I'm going to need a bunch of those. Hello, cave. That doesn't go anywhere. Whoa. Ah, hello. So we need something to use here. An ion cube. Okay. Let's see about getting one of those, I guess. Anything else of note in here? No, I guess not. Maybe we should go down into the facility then. Oh, it's dark in here. There's loads of lithium in these caves. Another purple tablet. <gasps> Ow. You can see like nine pieces of lithium in here. Note to self. Just come here. Oh, there's so much. These are the lithium caves, evidently. What's this? Hmm. Broken purple tablet. Carbon-based device is lighter than it looks. Features a symbol which resembles a U. Lit up in purple, despite the onboard power still functioning algae growth on the exterior indicates it was abandoned hundreds, perhaps thousands of years ago. While the technology is far beyond Federation levels, and there's no obvious way to interface with it, it should nonetheless be possible to fabricate a precise physical copy if necessary. So have I learned how to make these? I have. Ion cubes and diamonds. Ah. Of course you could just check the rest of the island and find three of them, but you know. I mean scans indicate this structure is composed of a metal alloy with unprecedented integrity. No match is found in database performing structural analysis. Very green in here. Huh? Air terminal. Unknown Unknown language. language. Attempting translation. Okay. Discovered inside an alien faci facility, it was not possible to translate any useful information. However, scans have returned some somewhat useful information on the device itself. A solid state computer, although there's no clear way to interface with it. It's likely that the alien species which designed this technologically or genetically selected sensory apparatus to hear the device. Interesting. Probably just like a Neuralink type thing. Not even that sci fi now. This is what happens when you start your early access game in 2014. Huh? I mean, we're basically catching up with these guys already. Ooh, hello. You look like an ion cube to me. Yeah, I should touch this. Yeah, just put it in front of your face. It's only glowing green and looks like the one thing that would definitely kill you. Analysis of the patterns on the walls cannot ascertain whether their purpose is aesthetic or functional. Further data required. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's web comics. Another ion cube. We needed one of these for that big gate thing. Data terminal, unknown language. Unknown language. Attempting translation. Enforcement platform schematic. The data appears to be multi-dimensional schematic of some kind. By mapping the pattern to 3D space, it's possible to gather a basic understanding of the facility's internal workings. Ultra hard non reactive metal amalgam synthesized from off world materials. There's no indication that it can be damaged or destroyed by available means. The schematic indicates the facility was to be powered by a separate self sustaining power plant located elsewhere on the planet. The location is not listed, but there is evidence the designers intended to harness the planet's natural thermal energy. Only there was a biome based around that concept, I don't know. This facility consists of the upper engineering section where the schematic was found and the control room which is accessed by a security sealed elevator shaft or a separate underwater moon pool. So we might have to go under the island to get there. The control room in the lower section houses the only known way to interface with the facility, however the schematic does not detail the operation procedure or installed security measures. Enforcement platform, huh? That doesn't sound good. Of interfacing with this facility is achieved by accessing the control room in the lower section. Is this an elevator? Ugh. Why though? Can't just give me a goddamn floor. To stand on. Fucking aliens. Ooh, let's float down. Bastards. Of course, we have the control. Ah, here's that moon pool they meant, so we don't really have to worry about that. Does that lead somewhere? Let me go take a quick look. 
Oh, hello. There's a uh, one of those gate things down there. That's interesting. What the fuck? Some kind of alien rifle? Oh, well, yeah, that's exactly what the game said too. Can I make it? Strong resemblance to human weaponry. In form, this device has been designed with a humanoid user in mind. Whether the aliens that built the structure were themselves humanoid or otherwise employed the use of humanoids is unclear. What is clear is that they consider defending this facility a necessary precaution. There's no obvious way to remove the rifle from the case. That's annoying. I bet it would be really good against the Reaper Leviathans. This game would be really, really easy if I had a laser AK-47, I'm not gonna lie. Another one of these. Hello. Alien device. Doomsday device. Scans indicate this device contains enough potential energy to destroy an entire planet, along with most of the solar system. Fortunately, it has malfunctioned. So just keep it in a box, I guess. Maybe don't make machines that can do that. Indicate the facility's control room lies beyond this doorway. Okay. Have another tablet. This is ominous. Energy core, hello. Can I make one of these? Equivalent to a 1000 megaton nuclear detonation. Stop making these things! Anyway, let's press a button, see what happens. Uh, yeah, I deserved this, didn't I? There are better ways to get blood samples. You could have provided me with a needle. Would have done it myself. Disable the weapon. This planet is under quarantine. Ruh-roh-raggy. Um. Okay, so I have a disease and this is a gun. Translating background broadcast. Oh. Downloading summary to databank. Okay. Alien facility locations. Disease research facility 800 meters. Thermal power facility 1200 meters. Sanctuary A. Sanctuary B, the off-site laboratory, and the primary containment facility are all corrupted. So, cave system southwest of the enforcement platform, and the lava biome. I forget what it's called. In the event of an outbreak, quarantine procedures will be automatically enforced with immediate effect. Quarantine enforcement platform will target all incoming and outgoing craft to prevent the spread of the infection off-world. Which is why we got shot down in the fucking first place, and now the sunbeam... What the fuck was that? I don't know why I'm saying what the fuck was that. I know what the fuck was that. That was a Reaper Leviathan. Jeez. Not even indoors am I safe from them, apparently. I have no idea what the fuck I was saying. I may have forgotten key information about my own life as that happened there. So, um, whatever the fuck I was talking about, that plot thread is dead. I am going to leave this facility and... Can I cure myself in 10 minutes, do you think? That wouldn't even do- well, no, I could disable the gun if I cured myself, right? Oh, shit. You know, this would be a really useful time to have built some kind of communication device with all of the fucking psychotic shit I've been stuffing into my spacesuit. But no, we made a one-way radio. Up we go. Do you think if I just scrape the word shit's fucked run away into the sand really big, they would notice and fly away? Also send laser guns. Maybe some drones. I mean, this game really doesn't work if you, like, think about the fact that if you had made any form of communication device that, that you could use to talk to the sunbeam as they approach the planet, because you could just be like, hey, um, gun? Not letting me off the planet. <laughs> That's gonna shoot you if you try and land. How awkward, I know. Uh, do you want to maybe go, like, get some government officials to send me some kind of assistance in the form of, like, a hell pod with a bunch of useful survival supplies so I can, you know, cure myself and claim this planet for humanity? But no. I'm just gonna stand here and be mute. So I got nine minutes. Where the sunbeam arrives and is probably going to get shot the fuck out of the sky. So, maybe we could check that portal thing up there. Yeah, that tree sample is already thingy. I'll just grab one before I leave. 
and try and get it back to my base and plant it as soon as possible. Let's head up to the portal thingy. I'm not going in the water down there yet. There's a fucking reaper and it doesn't even care about walls. Whoa. Okay, so this thingy wanted an ion cube. I mean, what's the worst that could possibly happen, right? Oh, I've been discombobulated. Oh, it burns. Oh. Did it spit me back out where I was? Oh no, this is a different place. But we are either on another island, or we're underground. I'm gonna go with another island, because I know the answer. But I'm trying to keep some suspense, okay? Pink caps. How creative. Yeah, this is another landmass. Bunch of trees. Oh, we're over here now. Like 2,000 meters away from the original site. There are a bunch of plants here. What are you? Picking up multiple Jaffa cups. On the island's surface. I see Jaffa Cakes gave up on whether or not it was a biscuit or a cake and decided to call it a cup. Oh, hey. Civilization. And a nice little base location if you wanted one, because that's kind of cool looking. Oh, well, there's two. Two mountain peaks and two little buildings. Another radio message. I feel like that moon there is impossibly close. Oh, a lantern tree, hello. Do you get these lantern fruit? Hmm. It'll rot by the time I get it back to my base, but it's good to know. Stasis rifle fragment. Get away from me. Chinese potato plants. Those are good as well, aren't they? Yeah, I think I prefer the... whatever that thing on the other island is called. Hello. Multi-purpose room. Ah, yes. This is like the one you really need. With a purple tablet and an abandoned PDA. What is that thing? I don't know. I found it outside in the sand. Uh, part of another ship? None I've ever seen. It's not even scratched. Uh, don't fool around with it. It might be worth something. Stand down, Chief. If it were going to crumble to dust, it would have done so when I picked it up. It's glowing. We're not the first people to come to this planet. People? Maybe. Could be aliens. Could be the damn sea monsters for all we know. One thing for sure, we ain't going to find out by state. Is that the end of that one? Okay. So someone was here. What spotlight? We got a bulkhead as well. Hello? Water and PDA. This is the first time I've seen sunlight in months. After all that time Backward. in the deep, I'd been dreaming of it. Now that I'm back here, I'm finding it hard to enjoy alone. My father was right. We should never have left this place. New we shouldn't have gone so deep. Backward. They do not want us down there. Despite my best efforts, ill health is taking hold of me. The visions are getting worse. Marguerite and Father are now part of the ecosystem of this incredible planet. It's reassuring to note that when I go, I'll join them. Until then, well, there's always the view. Okay, so they're all dead. They probably got the disease. I imagine it was either that or interdimensional Reaper Leviathans, which have decided that they no longer need water to breathe. My money's on a mixture of both, to be honest. God, we're really far away from the Aurora, aren't we? Anything in here? Composite plant and pot. It's just another style of it, I think. But I'll grab it. Another one of these. This Hang on, that's not the one. This island is a godsend. Look out of the window. No predators. Fresh food. No building materials. Nothing left of the ship. And your kid says we're going to starve without more grow beds. Speak up, kid. It's true, father. The natural growth rates are too slow to keep supporting us. All I'm saying is, oceans got us surrounded. No use hiding. Sooner or later, we'll get our feet wet. The rest of your life may have been a fight maider, but I've made my decision. You want to forfeit your emergency pay to take a swim? Go ahead. Believe me, I'm thinking on it. <laughs> There's the Ultra Glide fins. That's where we find that. And here's, I think, the last voice. Oh no, there's two more. We've got one abandoned PDA here. Chief's log, five weeks since. I'm gonna stop that one, because 
I want to get the timing right. But uh, Chief Slog, five weeks since the crash. The only other survivors are my son, Bart, and Maida, the mercenary. Uh, they washed up here. They salvaged the Degassi wreck. So this is a ship that crashed before the Aurora. That's why this place is so wrecked compared to the things you would expect from survivors who just arrived. Weather's going to turn. He's a scientist. And he's convinced he's going to keep them alive. Well, I think we can agree science didn't fucking help you there, buddy. And here's the gassy Sir, voice lane too. I said wait for the storm to pass. Your life's more valuable to me than a plant patch. You stop being in charge when the ship you were captaining sunk. I'll stop being in charge when you take charge of yourself. Say, Chief. Chief. What? You know how to drain those grow beds of 40 tons of storm water? Or how to conjure food from the air? I know how to prioritize. I'm just saying, if that's so, what's your boy's life worth to you today? If tomorrow you're going to be so hungry you start wondering what it tastes like, let him go deal with the plants. Son, go deal with the plants. Bart, Torgo has disembarked the habitat. Interfere with my family again. And when rescue arrives, I will leave you here. Do you understand me? No rescue coming, Chief. Not in time. No staying here, neither. <clears throat> this rain keeps falling. Sooner or later, this place will be buried. The only choice we got is whether to get buried with it. All right. So those were all out of order. But basically, they arrived, they found food, there was discord, they died of the disease, presumably. But we did find out that they probably went underwater at some point, because they needed to. Survivor, we see you. Do you? Man, I don't know how you held out down there. We broke an atmosphere, and we're uh -oh. descending towards the landing site. You might want to not do that. What do you mean you can't identify Are you going to be in the shadow of the fucking mountain? I'm going to be so mad if I don't get to see this. Hold on. No turning back now. Positions, everyone. Touching down. There is turning back now. You should probably turn back now. And that's why we use drones. Alright, so those fuckers are dead. Let's go home. <laughs> We're gonna have to make our own. Whoa, that's trippy. Hello. We're gonna have to make our own way off the island now. Island? No, that's Ark Survival Evolved. We're going to make our own way off of the planet now. Which is going to involve me curing myself and turning that gun off. And building a rocket. Not too much to do then. Just have to cure a disease that the people who could make a reactor that has 100 megatons of nuclear power behind it couldn't cure. I've got to do that myself with a survival knife. And then build a rocket. Now we need to get back to my base without being eaten by a Reaper Leviathan. Yeah, let me grab some of these samples. Welcome aboard, Captain. That Reaper sounds very close and I'm not a fan. If I stay close to the uh, side of the mountain though, I should be okay. But that's also where that one warper was, so I have to be careful of that. that him there? No, that's a fucking mountain. <laughs> I think we should be safe in this biome. This isn't really prime Reaper Leviathan territory. So let's head back to my base and see about crafting some stuff, because I've done enough story for today. Hang on, what's that? Ah, just a sea glide? I don't care. Oh, hello. Life pod. Have I been here? Pretty sure I have. Life pod 3, right? Yeah, we've been here. Alright, here we are back at base. First thing I need to do. Come in here, get the buildy thing, get some titanium, grab that, and get a basic plant pot, maybe put that here, and here, and just grow one of those. And that'll turn into bulbo trees that I can use for food, or energy at a bioreactor. Here we go. So, we got a bunch of story stuff done today. Let's listen to the radio really quick. Playing partially translated broadcast. Nine new biological 
all subjects designated mode. Hunting, analyzing, sharing subject locations with other agents. That's kind of spooky. Anyway, was there not another radio message? No, I guess not. So what else do I want to make? I need to keep up with all the blueprints that I'm learning. One thing that would probably be very smart to get soon is ultra glide fins, definitely. Maybe a large room, because this is kind of like scuffed, the current system I'm using. Uh, we could use a power cell charger, definitely. Could make a water filter machine -y thingy. What I really need yeah, is that, the modification station. Because that'll let me craft all these modifications. So let's start with that. We need a piece of titanium and a piece of lead. It's a diamond and a computer chip. Alright, so I think I'm out of diamonds, but I know a place to get some. But before I go and do that, let's see what we need for a computer chip as well. Gold, table coral, and copper. Two gold. And then I need to go hunt down the other stuff, so... Table coral is obviously very easy. Then I need to go find two copper. So give me a second. There we go. Then I need just a diamond. And those come from shale. Primarily, anyway. And shale is often found in the jelly shroom caves which are near life pod 17. I'm going to keep 19 up because I know I've not been there yet, so that's useful for me, but I'm going to use the other one as a waypoint, basically. Here we go. I think this would be the closest source of diamonds? I'm not sure. While I'm here, I should probably look into the things I want to make because they're probably going to require some more rare components like that. The steel, lithium, polyaniline, if I wanted that, which I don't, but what do you need for polyaniline? Gold and hydrochloric acid, which is deep shrooms. Yeah, I haven't found any deep shrooms yet. Oh, rip the Gary fish. So, I just need some lithium, which you will also get in the jelly shroom caves. Here we are. Just descend into here. Immediately, though, I see some shale. With the lithium. Now, there's a lot of um, entrances to the jelly shroom cave. So we can kind of just go wherever we want. We should always be able to find a way out. We just have to avoid the... I think those are called crab snakes. I don't think they're too much of a threat to the sea moth. But if I get out the sea moth, they could definitely hit me in the face a little bit. By that I mean eat me. Probably whole. There's a lot of geothermal activity down here. That's good. Make a base near here and use that for easy power. Just need some... Thermal thingies. Have I learned to make those yet? Because that would be a key. Okay, I haven't learned thermal plants. We should try and get that at some point soon because that would be very helpful. The very sustainable power source. Here's the diamond I needed at least. Oh, hello. There's a sea base down here. Headed basically southeast from the cave that I came in. How uh, active are these with crab snakes? Can I get out safely? Looks like it. Hello, Oculus. Right, well, we could have a look in here. Ah, and there's thermal plant schematics here. Let's find one more. Ah, there we go. Alright, perfect. Let's see what else we can find in here, though. I imagine this is Degassi related, because how the hell would the Aurora crew have done this? Yeah, there, we go. there is always a pecking order, and in our world, money makes a hierarchy. I pay Maida a fraction of what I pay you, and you a fraction of what I pay me. If money makes the hierarchy, why is Marguerite making the decisions? We need her. We let her think what she likes, so long as she does what she's told. And what if she doesn't? For enough money, she will. People always do. Alright, we got another voice log here, though. Thought it might get claustrophobic living underwater. Father feels it is. He'd tell me it was childish, but I stare out of the window and sometimes I think how lucky I am to see this world up close. Back on the island, I wouldn't have believed the creatures that live down here. The fish, they glow. 
There's one that's 90% eyeball. Snakes twice the length of a habitat compartment. Certainly, it's not all friendly. Most of the plant life is toxic. I learned that the hard way. But I've managed to coax some marble melons into growing indoors. And when they don't cover our dietary needs, well, we eat the fish themselves. It's a bit gross, but it's nothing they wouldn't do. I've been attempting to document the findings. Father approves. He says understanding is power. That the more we know about this planet, the more we can use it to our advantage. I'm just doing it because it's fun. It's not easy without proper equipment and network access, but the old-fashioned way, observing, taking notes, testing theories, shows me the world in a way a spectroscopic analysis never could. Lately, I've been watching the crab snakes. They ambush their prey as it tries to feed on the mushrooms they hide in. What they don't eat settles on the seabed, which fertilizes the mushrooms, which feeds the herbivores, and so the chain continues. Coevolution gives me the fuzzies. Okay. So the mushrooms and the crab snakes are buddies. Got it. Grab that. Something incredible just happened. Since we're down here, I had this plan to build equipment and study the life forms we were encountering, but I didn't have enough enameled glass. So I started looking for a natural substrate that would strengthen the glass we have. Welcome and those stalk teeth we've been finding fit the bill. Only, well, we needed more. That's when Marguerite got interested. She actually listened to me. More than I can say for father. And I worked up the courage to talk about my more tentative theories. When I told her they were attracted to metal deposits, that their teeth get dislodged when they pick them up, her eyes narrowed and she dashed out of the room. Three hours later, she came back, her pack loaded down with stalker teeth. I asked her about it. She shrugged and said my theories were good. Said she had the meeting out of the palm of her hand. I think she meant it literally. She is incredible. She went out to the kelp forest armed with just a heat blade and went fin to fin with a pack of stalkers. On the one hand, that is the coolest thing I have ever heard. On the other, well, I hope the stalkers didn't come off worse than Marguerite did. She had a huge gash on her forearm. I don't think things went as smoothly as she made out. What's the point in surviving here? If we have to kill everything that makes it so wonderful. I wish I knew more about these animals. But father won't let me leave the habitat. Maybe with all this glass, we could build a containment unit and get up close to them. Okay, so you can make enameled glass from stalker teeth. Got it. And then the final log. We're already 200 meters below sea level. You want to go deeper? Look around us, chief. Water leaking through the hull, water outside the hatch. We're drowning. If rescue arrives, whatever shot us down, it's going to do it again and again until it's shut off. Why would it any more likely be half a kilometer down? Your kid found something on the scanner. There's something down there. Something that shouldn't be. <laughs> You're mad! I'm going all the same, and I have an idea you two are going to follow. But if you do, be mindful. Your authority stopped at sea level. Hey, and Marguerite went to go find something that we're probably gonna have to go find let's head back now we got the thermal plant schematic the ultra high capacity tank mod schematic and the things we need for the modification station actually while i'm here what do i need for ultra high capacity blah 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 more lithiums right let's get those before we leave oh hello crab snake no, don't touch me. Leave me alone. How the hell did a sand shark get down here? There we go, the fifth lithium I need. Let's head back to base. And we're back. Got another radio Welcome message. I priority automated message from Aurora Live Pod 13 coordinates attached. Live Pod is carrying high priority passenger. Yoki Kasa. I said Kasa. Why do I have to record this anyway? Send immediate burial detail. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Hmm. He dead. So we can make the thermal blade immediately. There's an upgrade. Now, what does the thermal blade do? Well, the easiest way to explain that is to go and stab a peeper. No, nope, that is a giant coral tube. That's not what I'm looking for. 
There we go. And now it's cooked. Saving me energy. Oh, hello, Stalker. That was terrifying. Anyway, that was just one of the upgrades I wanted. Let's do the other ones. So, take off my oxygen tank here real quick. And make the ultra high capacity. So, we were at 135 seconds now. Now we're at 225. And then, if I want ultra glide fins, I need to get fins and two silicon rubber. Am I wearing fins? Yeah. There's one silicon rubber. Go grab some more. There we go. Let me go grab the things I put away there real quick. And take off my fins. These let you move at 15% faster. Then the ultra glides let you move faster than regular fins. Um, looking on the Subnautica wiki, the regular fins make you swim 1.4 meters per second faster, which the game says is 15% faster, and the Ultra Glide fins let you swim 2.4 meters per second faster. So it's about, I want to say, probably about 25% faster swimming compared to no fins, or 10% faster than regular fins, so pretty good. Yeah, you can definitely feel it. Obviously, if you have the sea glide out, it's kind of hard to tell, but for just normal swimming, this is definitely faster than normal, so that's good. But that is all I have time to do for today's episode. We got a lot of the story done, and we got a good few upgrades there, and we're ready to start really diving, on a side, into the meat of Subnautica with, like, the crafting loot. So that'll be really fun. Remember that my Patreons and YouTube members do get these videos a day early. There was a bit of a disruption in that last week because I did get sick as I said at the start of the video, but usually you'll get them a day early. Let me know if you're still enjoying the Subnautica series and in the meantime, special thank you to my members and patrons. If you want to become one of those, there are links in the description to do so. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out another one? I would recommend the one on the top right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.